Welcome back to the Nerdly Out Loud podcast, the official podcast of nerdly.co.uk, your favourite British website for all of our news, reviews and exclusive interviews. We like to cover everything from the big budget to the low budget to the no budget, with a special keen interest, a special keen eye, you might say, on the lower guys, the guys who are making their way, starting out and just getting themselves into the game. That is what we like to do. That's what we like to push. They are our guys. The best thing that we can do is to give these guys a platform just to let people know about their movies and to have them front and centre. And that's what these interviews are all about. My name's Kevin Halden. You know me. I'm back. You love me. Let's get on with this. This is an interview with Jill Gazarian. She is an absolutely fantastic director who's just come out with a debut of a movie called The Stylist, a short movie that she made a few years back and they did a whole Kickstarter campaign and they've got a feature length out now. And this is amazing. It's it's hit festivals all around the world. People seem to be really, really receiving it well. And I am not surprised because for her first feature length movie, this thing's gorgeous. The cinematography's gorgeous. The, The score is gorgeous. You could just sit and listen to this movie and you'd be pretty happy. You'd be pretty happy. It's a great sounding movie the lead is Najara Townsend who is just brilliant in this role like you kind of know she's a bit of an evil person (laughs) I'm gonna go with person Uh, you kind of know that but you also feel pretty sympathetic towards her and you kind of you feel bad for her in a way which I guess is like the main staple of any good psychopathic killer in these movies in these uh, psychological horror thrillers you 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 need to feel something for them i guess and you really do you really do uh, co-starring alongside her is the amazing bria grant who i'm a, I'm a huge fan of um i saw 12 hour shift a little while back that's her directorial movie as well do check out my review on the website because i love that movie i really really went in on that film but this film the stylist is just fantastic and i genuinely think that jill it's different it's very different you know you it feels quite familiar but it's extremely different which you don't often come across and i think that's why people have really been getting into this one so jill came on the podcast she jumped on zoom to chat with me for a little bit she had loads of these things to do that day but she was very very super gracious with her time and we really kind of got into it a little bit about uh, what she, who she was kind of thinking about when, when writing this, um, some of the, the, the things that were going on, kind of behind the scenes, sort of thing. How they came up with the score, and, and we even get a little bit into the whole um, female directors and powerful female leads because there are some fantastic films out right now that maybe not everybody knows about. Promising young woman. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Wasn't really a massive fan of Carrie Mulligan going in. I am now, though. I loved that film. And then Abner Pastol's movie, uh, Good Woman is Hard to Find, with Sarah Bulger. Loved that film. That was a great film. The Relics come out, and everybody's loving that. St. Maud came out, everybody's loving that. So there are some fantastic films out there with fantastic female leads that a lot of people might miss because let's be honest they're on the lower end of of the budget so they go by that's why we at nerdly out loud do what we do we want to push these people to the moon have them skyrocket out of the stratosphere and just people to see them so we're going to get into the interview now in a minute but what i'm going to ask you to do is there is a subscribe button down below hit the subscribe for me please that would be awesome there is a little bell beside it it's like a notification bell it lets you know whenever we release an episode hit that bell and hit all notifications uh, give me a little thumbs up that would be cool you can give me a thumbs down too i'd be okay with that but you know a thumbs up is nicer be be constructive be productive that is what i like to say around here don't just use your voice use it nicely is all i'm trying to say so yeah we're gonna get into it now in a minute do all that good stuff check out the nerdly out loud podcast uh, it's on all your all your favorite podcasting apps we're on the apple music we're on the apple podcasts we're on spotify we're on google play we're on all those amazing apps, all the third party stuff stitcher everything like that do go and check out our podcast nerdly out loud wherever you get your podcasts check out the website nerdly.co.uk we've got some amazing reviews on there there'll be some reviews for the stylist reviews for 12 hour shift reviews for all the movies that i've mentioned in this um 
was meant to be a short intro but has turned into a full seven minute epic but yeah so go over to there you will see loads of other podcasts the history of bad ideas podcast the cinema guys podcast you will see loads of other reviewers check them all out let them know that you got there because of us we are nerdly out loud this is jill Gazarian. I've probably butchered that twice now and I do apologise. I do a better job in the interview. Most of all, tell a friend about The Stylist. Go and check it out. Go and see it. Go and watch it. Please do check this movie out. If you don't like it, that's fine. Not everybody likes everything. That's totally okay. You are well within your right to not like a movie. If you do like it though, if you do like it, get yourself onto IMDb. Give it a review. Get yourself onto Rotten Tomatoes. Help this movie get that 100% certification. It still has it right now. That means a lot to these people. It is amazing going forward. Please do. Let's just keep that going. Yes, let's get into the interview. Let's do that. And I'll be on the other side of the interview and I'll wrap this thing out now in a minute. I am joined by the awesome Jill Gavargazian. That I think that I did, was great. I, I think I did pretty well there. Uh, Jill is the the writer and director of horror thriller movie The Stylist. Which, if you haven't seen it right now, I don't know where you've been because it's out there and it's absolutely smashing the festival circuit everyone's loving this film so when i had the chance to speak to jill there was no way i wasn't going to do it movie currently as well as picking up all the awards everywhere currently holds a hundred percent on rotten tomatoes still is that right yeah it does that's mad <laughs> and i know you've done a bunch Very of short happens. i know you've done a bunch of short movies and stuff but this is uh, your first foray into a feature length so how, how does that feel to have the movie out and something like Rotten Tomatoes leaving it at 100% and giving you that fresh rate, and that's awesome. It's um, honestly still very surreal. In fact, I was trying to tell myself this morning, you made a movie. This is freaking exciting. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're all the reviewers out there, add your reviews, because we still need the more to get that official rating, but that is, I look at it a lot and geek out, for sure. <laughs> it's it's overwhelmingly exciting that's cool and, and and of course the horror fans they they've all seemed to have taken it greatly um, the fright fest audience if you can please the fright fest audience you are <laughs> and and Sidges as well you you are well on your way and and you seem to have pleased everyone so far with this film yeah the i really closely followed the hash everyone on twitter through fright fest and the re responses were freaking awesome there especially mm. they're like it blew up i felt like that yeah the fright fest audience and, and they all took to it and um but i want to get a little bit of background because what i will say is this film uh, as great as it is is pretty damn shocking so i would i would quite like to know <laughs> how you came to kind of the the horror movie genre and where the hell this movie came from <laughs> well i i fell in love with horror movies the first time i got to see something scary uh i remember i would get go stay with a friend when i was younger whose parents didn't really you know closely pay attention to what we were mm. watching so i watched stuff way too young but i fell in love with it right away like candy man is one of the first i fell in love mm. with and that kind of ties into like the my favorite kind of horror films are films kind of like candy man where i think 
he's like a monster who is sympathetic. You, you, you know, he's kind of created by society. You understand where he came from. And I, while he's still hor- absolutely terrifying, I still think he's so scary. Uh, so I've always loved just, I've loved scary and sad films since I was super young. I think something about just like super powerful or like, you know, emotionally affecting films, whether it is scary or sad, or I like the combination of the two. And I was a, you know, became a fanatic as a young teenager and it just kept going. And I've been a hairstylist for 15 years or (laughs) over 15 years. And one day I was just like, how is there not already a, like a slasher movie about a hairstylist? Then it just started going from there. I was like, well, I'm going to do that. Like, I'm going to make the movie. And then kind of went a more of a psychological thriller mm-hmm. route, still with slasher nods. But yeah, I, still, I also think still a crazy like horror comedy about a, a hairstylist killer could also exist. <laughs> mm. Oh, definitely, definitely. So for anyone out there who's had their hair cut by Jill, you now know what she was thinking about at that present point at that time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I promise. It's not that. <laughs> <laughs> Although so, people do ask that often. Yeah, but but where where did uh, obviously you you sort of and one of the it was part of one of the questions I have is that sort of you put all those horror genre themes kind of into your character of Claire with um with the empathy and the sympathetic and everything and normally they're quite I I don't want to say grotesque but normally like they're big hulking characters and then you've got yeah. you know. Najara Townsend, who, let's be honest, is a very good looking lady, and you've got all this these things going on inside her head. So is that kind of yeah. who were you drawing on? I know you're talking about like inspired by Candyman and everything, but was there anything in particular that you drew on for writing this for the Claire character? Um, she had a lot of inspiration from like Leatherface as a character and even uh Lucky McKee's May. Mm. I just like a lot about may is one of my favorite films but um i wanted it to really really be focused on what was going on inside her head and in fact we made a short film about the stylist first and we had some like scars on her neck that i decided to take out of the feature because i didn't want it to at all be focused on actual anything physical yeah um and yeah because najara is just so striking and but, you know, brought this character to life, I think, in the perfect way that I, is why it works. Because I really didn't want it to be campy. She somehow still feels real and human while doing these, mm. like, totally absurd things. <laughs> and, and I think a lot of that is accentuated by the um, your cinematographer, the cinematography on this film. It looks gorgeous, even in, like, the, the spaces where you're showing sort of a, a macabre type thing. It just looks great, and your score is just fantastic to listen to. You know, it's it's another one of those things where something horrendous on the screen is happening, and you can't help but sit there and go, "Oh, but the man, that score's so good." How how did you go about putting <laughs> your your team together? And because you kind of you kind of walk on a fine line with what you're showing, and it, it could go too campy one way or too dark the other way and i think the cinematography and the score helps a lot on that how did you um get your team together for this it's um it's a team i've been working with for a long time in fact the cinematographer specifically production designer and composer all were working on the style of short film nice, so we've nice. all kind of been like marinating on this idea for five years we finally got to make the feature but um it was always our intention for it to be kind of like a, a hyper stylized film and not to represent reality. You know, Mm -hmm. I wanted, and that was always this fine line I battled with internally that I wanted also with Claire, I wanted her to feel really real, but every, everything about the film, we were kind of approaching on a surreal way. And I'm very interested in like really hot, like intricately designed films and that's what i wanted to do and this felt like the film to do that with it's about a stylist or like yeah. we're gonna make the most stylish movie yeah, ever yeah. um 
and we created like a very strict like color palette and like rules for the camera and when it does like when we move it when we do zooms it all had we created like a reason for everything and yeah. put a lot of time planning it and then with the score it's cool he actually bought brought the like kind of theme from the short over but he redid it and this m- movie has like over an hour almost of score in it yeah. <laughs> and uh, we hope to release it but uh that's my hope i would just die to have it myself but um you absolutely should you should it's a, it's a great score. <laughs> But that's Nick Elert, and he's just, it's really interesting. I, I pitched the idea. In fact, it's similar. I was like, I want it. We were trying to mix this idea of modern vintage with everything we approached. And so there were a lot of, I sent him like scores and that I love as far as like feeling from kind of the, mm-hmm. a lot of 70s thrillers and then modern ones like Phantom Thread or Black Swan. But he was like, what if I try? instead of like having a whole orchestra, this was his idea. He's like, we wanted something really elegant. He's like, what if I try through all of my super weird devices, which he has like so many things in his, in his studio. <laughs> like I make all those sounds on my own through different devices. So it has this like distortion of the elegance. And I was like, his mind just like, it reels in these coolest ways. I just kind of let him go and it was really fun. It was kind of just like the music was always kind of representing how Claire's feeling. Everything is about Claire and her perspective. And so, yeah, it was a crazy fun experience and so cha- challenging for on my side and for the first time to score a feature. A short is like a, a scene or two. Yeah. And we're dealing with a lot of different emotions and things. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a much bigger thing. It was amazing experience, though. <laughs> so <laughs> one thing i do have to ask because um there, there are there are a lot of women out there who who can't wait to plan their perfect wedding why did you set <laughs> this round round a wedding it, it, i mean it, it kind of lends itself i guess but yeah you may have destroyed many women's weddings <laughs> <laughs> even more where we shot it i know a lot of people who've been married in that exact oh, nice. chapel <laughs> But um, it the ending is one of the first is like the first thing that dawned on me about the script that I was like, that's for sure. Now I know like where I'm going. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that's the end. Um, but it it just kind of provided like all of my dream elements as far as uh, as all as like from design point of view yeah. and even like the story. I was like, it can have this very theatrical epic in tragic ending which i love like shakespearean tragedies Mm. which is like the vibe i'm going for with that um and so i was like oh my god when i thought of it i was like that is gonna be my dream like in the church and like all these candles and Mm. it's super disturbing and sad um i yeah i once i figured that was and what's funny is a friend of mine was preparing to get married when i thought of that idea so nice she inspired me and I love her. I don't want her. I don't want to anything to happen to her. <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I do love that. End and it's, um, it, it took, it knocked me for six. I will say, um, obviously we don't want to give spoilers or anything cause we do want people to watch it, but it did throw me for six that end. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm I d- so glad. <laughs> I guess that's what it was meant to do. I also have Brie Grant, who uh, recently I watched her her directorial film, um, 12 Hour Shift. I just think she's fantastic. How did she come on board and, and how was this chemistry between the two of them? She, um, yeah, Bria is incredible and has like, I feel so many projects moving right now. It's so mm. exciting. Um, well, we attack, we, we connected through another project, another feature that we were, you know, on the path of struggling to make like we all are. And yeah. um, with a, with the character, Olivia, I always imagined, I often imagined Bria in that role because I felt like she encompassed a lot of her in real life. And uh, so when it came down to finally, like we were trying to get this movie made for years and we decided to, kickstart it literally with a kickstarter and so i was asking her um about playing that role and at the time it was kind of like do you 
have the time to do it if you're also interested because she's like you said has 12 hour shift she yeah. wrote and starred in lucky another feature that's yeah. about to come out um she's directing on a tv show so we kind of had to wait till we got closer to the shoot to know for sure that she could do it and i was like i didn't have any backup plan i don't know what i was gonna do <laughs> if she couldn't um and their chemistry was like it i literally like teared up the first time i saw them do a scene together because mm -hmm. olivia was always always created as like the anti claire and they're the perf she has the perfect they were the perfect like clashing <laughs> personalities she's so open and you know just so open and loud not in a bad way but yeah. just and claire so closed down it was in fact, the, one of the first things we filmed was a super intense scene between them on the park and a parking deck is a confrontational scene. Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing I saw them do together. I didn't know what it was going to be like. And I was like, oh, my, I was just so excited. I was like skipping across the room and like <laughs> freezing outside, actually. But yeah, they were the perfect opposites. That's so cool. That's so cool. They they do in the, in the movie. They it's quite funny because they are the polar opposite. But you, they're also very alike in the same way as well. Yeah. Same. Um, I, I do love the the relationship that they have and the chemistry they have together. It's just yeah, it's wonderful. But I, I suppose that's a lot to do with with your script as well, which is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll just slip that one in there as well. <laughs> one one of the one of the questions I do have is. Um, recently especially on the sort of the 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 lower budget end of the scale type thing and the, and the independence and and a lot of horrors and thrillers there's been a few big sort of um i suppose you would say female empowered movies with um pro promising young women and their 12-hour shift and everything how how important is it that we push these movies forward um in the the female leads but also how awesome is it for yourself to be sort of in that conversation right now as well? It's really exciting. Um, I feel like it's time for us just to be equally yeah. pushing everything and hopefully we won't have to, you know, label it anymore, which I, I understand kind of to bring it up to, to, to even we highlight the things that aren't, um, it's really exciting, especially being conversations with some of those filmmakers. And I mean, I grew up, I'm so geeked out that I even got to work with Bria Grant. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, knew her from Heroes back in the day and was like, what? When I first met her. But um, it's really exciting. And there's been quite a few. I feel like it's, I kind of, I keep track of all my films and kind of a special list for female directed stuff and all the new stuff I watch each year. And last year I felt like Nat, I didn't even, it wasn't like an intention, but a lot more happened. I think they're just coming out more or get, getting more opportunity. Like, you know, there's relic or yeah, um, yeah. amulet was a freaking awesome film. I haven't seen St. Maud yet. Dying to see it. <laughs> uh, it, it is a conversation that I feel it it shouldn't be a conversation anymore but it does seem to be one that's coming up but especially like you say over the last year um two years there's been some incredible stuff coming out and and i'm just i'm really excited to see what what comes next kind of thing me too so so on that what do you have coming up next i mean uh, the stylist is hitting i believe arrow on march the first so people are going to be able to see it then um are you, are you having a proper physical release as well and and then what projects are you going on to after this yes um what's funny is that question i always just want to say i'm still working on the stylist in so many <laughs> ways you know uh yeah, yeah. we're making lots of cool extras and Oh my, the list never ends, but it's so exciting. Um, we do have a physical release planned also with Arrow. It's going to be in June, June. And I can't wait till we announce all the crazy extras that we are doing, <laughs> which is what my life is right now. There's like lists of it over here. Um, but I have a couple feature films I'm attached to as director with other writers. One that's with the team behind uh, Fangorio's 
Fangorio. Nice. Fangoria is porno. That's why nice. I said it. Which, which I always say Fangoria because you just, it's not just a porno. It's a real movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's actually, I love, it's Matt Black and Lawrence Vanicelli, the writers. It's a quite different tone. Like it's not horror comedy at all. It's more of like a thriller horror and I'm really excited about it. I don't know that I can talk about it any of these in <laughs> detail yet, but um, hoping to get another movie moving soon. And I'm also helping produce uh, my editor John Pata's film Black Mold. So we we're all kind of a fam film family. This the producer, two producers that I made stylus with Sarah Sharp and Robert Cern. They're also the production designer and DP. Mm. We've uh, we kind of just want to keep getting each other's movies made and stay in this little family we've we've created. <laughs> These are my favorite things about the the guys that I speak to. I, I like to try and push the 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 more independent guys and and you do you do find these little pockets that people like to stay in and sort of make each other's movies and everything i love it i think it's great i think it's fantastic i'm going to be keeping an eye because i genuinely love the stylist it took it threw me for a loop because that first five ten minutes i, I just kind of i was sitting watching this gorgeous looking slow kind of nice movie and then no it's not <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much what, what, what i want to do before i let you go is uh, if you could let our viewers and our listeners and everything let let them all know where they can find you where they can find the stylist and why they should watch it yes um you can find me at jill six with two x's on all the places and the stylist at, at the stylist film on all the places as well. And you should totally watch the movie because there ha I am not prepared for this pitch. You should check <laughs> out the film because it's um, a super deranged film about a hairstylist that I'm trying to bring you onto her side and sympathize with this totally lost person who you know, we're all kind of our wor own worst enemy. And I hope people can kind of see themselves a little bit in her, but, you know, not in a scary way. <laughs> and, and I love the fact that behind you, you, you have got some uh, stylist heads. I do love that. Yes. <laughs> I spotted them straight away. And, I was like, <laughs> and on that, the poster that was released, the UK, I think it's the UK poster. What a poster that is, by the way. Yeah, it's... Uh, arrows poster so i think it's you know mm. kind of for our us uk canada release it was done by sarah deck and is so freaking beautiful mm. um the concept was her idea and i was just like stunned by the idea of it being a mannequin face instead of claire wearing claire's hair and i was like that like the idea just kind of blew my mind i'm like that is so freaking cool <laughs> it, it's quite funny how a poster can just flip everything on its head <laughs> yeah in many ways <laughs> in many many ways so jill thank you so much for coming on um this has been absolutely fantastic i'm not going to take up any more of your time uh i just want to say again from the bottom of my heart thanks for coming on because i genuinely genuinely loved this movie thank you so much for having me it's a pleasure and i'll be looking out for anything else you do <laughs> all right thank you i'll get to work thank you before we wrap up the video i'm going to do my little blurb in a second um just to wrap things up but before we do this video this interview could not be done without the the awesomeness from the guys at undone watches please do check out in the in the links though in the description below there will be loads of links and everything like that for undonewatches.com a fantastic watch making company with handcrafted everything is made custom to your specification i'm a big nerd i'm a big geek hence nerdly out loud hence uh, nerdly.co.uk i am a massive massive geek so when it came for me to get an undone watch it had to be this one it is the kryptonian decryptor yeah it's a superman watch but more than that it's just pure awesomeness i mean yeah it tells the time so what but it also has like kryptonian language around the dial so you can make your own codes and um, you've got a little kryptonian alphabet on the back this thing's amazing it's got a nice little uh, red dial which says undone on it they've got the undone branding pretty much everywhere it's just awesome i absolutely love this watch i've not really been a massive 
watch wearer over the years. For me, this is a perfect watch because it's a nice and geeky. I get to show off my geek side and I also get to be able to tell the time and you get like Kryptonian stuff. And if, if that wasn't enough, listen to this. Yeah, who doesn't want a bezel that does that? That is the rotating bezel that does things like that. Do check out the website. Uh, the links, like I say, will be below. Do go and have a look. They've got fantastic watches like the Batman watch. They've got the Wonder Woman watch. They have got the, um, there's a Fallout watch. There's a Mr. Monopoly watch. There's like a Bitcoin watch. All sorts of different watches on there. But if you don't want one of their custom handmade watches that they have for sale, which are awesome, by the way, you can also custom make your own. You can choose the straps. You can choose the dials. You can choose the hands. You can choose the face. You can choose the bezel you can choose the color you can choose practically anything that you want to choose on this thing i got mine i ordered mine uh, it got sent on a thursday and it turned up on the monday which is just fantastic service four day turnaround you cannot disagree with that one year warranty 14 days return uh, guarantee please do undonewatches.com check them out they are awesome and we are very happy to have them on board Thanks again to Jill. She was absolutely fantastic. I loved this interview. That we we got we, you know we we didn't have a great deal of time, but we really got into it. And you don't want to go too in depth with your questions when you're just trying to promote someone's movie because that is essentially what we are doing here. We are trying to promote these people, these artists, these directors, these creatives, producers, directors, editors, all that good stuff. We are here. Nerdly Out Loud podcast exists to do such a thing. Jill is a director you absolutely have to be keeping an eye on because she's going places. The Stylist is a fantastic movie. Not only is it a good psychological horror with a fantastic female lead, but it looks amazing. Like, cinematography-wise, this thing looks gorgeous. The score, you could just listen to this movie and you'd be happy. You know, so, yeah, I can't, I can't say enough about the film. Please do check it out. If you don't like it, well, that's up to you. If you do like it, please do go to IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, all that good stuff. Leave a review for Jill and make sure that more people get to see the movie. We just want eyes on this movie. So for, with that, I am going to go. I will be back with another interview soon <laughs> we, we've got a fair few things coming and i just i can't thank you enough just just keep coming back keep watching the videos and um, we will see you again now in a minute and yeah i'm out